What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Where today, um, we will be watching two Spider-Man horror stories since the new Spider-Man No Way Home movie came out. Um, now I won't spoil anything, but it's a great movie. I really recommend it. So, who do you think was the best Spider-Man? Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, or Tom Holland? Uh, you can answer that in iCloud above iCard. Sorry. And tell me your answer in there. Anyways, into the video. So, this video was made by um, Broccoli Animations. Honestly, very great um, YouTubers. They have a lot of good animations. Um, yep, they. So, I watched that, that video quite a lot. So, I really recommend them. Just a quick shout out to you guys. Uh, so go check them out if you also like um horror stories like me because they have a lot of amazing content but um let's see what you've got today i woke up one day and a feeling took over me i mean i always like to protect people and help them but on october 21st something was different Maybe the YouTube videos I saw the other day about random acts of kindness and the way people reacted to them made me unlock a protective gene or something inside of me. Despite all of that, I was a fan of the classic superheroes like Batman, Superman, Captain America, and the list can go on. But there was one that really spoke to me, and I always thought that maybe I could be as good, if not better, as Spider-Man than Peter Parker. As I was a kid, I would stay in bed and imagine what would happen if I was suddenly bitten by a radioactive spider. I would see, as I glanced at the white wall in front of me, how I'd swing from one skyscraper to another, how I'd climb on walls and punch Dr. Octopus in his face. But okay, me too. I have also pictured that, and I'd also picture how I'd save the school if it was a um, school nerf war. <clears throat> but one person has to nerf with him. Uh, but I know you have to. I know you have. Anyways, um, it's off topic. Uh, back into the video. But of course, that was only a dream. To tell you how serious I was about this hero business, I even took martial arts classes and homemade a hero suit. It was very closely related to Spider-Man. Only a few minor details set it apart. But whenever I'd put it on, I would think of myself as Spider-Man from a different universe. On October 21st, I was sitting in my apartment, and at that moment I was trying on the suit. I had a few ideas in mind on how to make it better. And as I was looking in the mirror, I heard something. Help! Thief! Help! The voice of a woman asking for help came from right outside my building. I looked out the window and saw her screaming and pointing to the right. As I turned my head, I saw a man running away with what looked like her purse. Without wasting any time, I got out the window, and by gripping to the window sills of the apartments below mine, I immediately reached the sidewalk. Okay, don't do this at home, this is actually really dangerous, and you could get hurt, and by holding, like, holding onto, like, your windowsill, like, if it just snapped, if it was, like, rotting wood or something, and it just snapped, you could get hurt quite badly, like, maybe even break your back, so, um, I don't recommend doing that. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I really don't recommend that. I started running as fast as I could. I'm a very athletic guy, and catching up to that out-of-shape robber wasn't that much of a hassle. Hey, stop it right now! I yelled as I was getting closer to him. The guy turned his head, saw me, and laughed before turning right into a dark... Okay, I would never do this. I would never steal or anything, but... <laughs> if I did something bad... If someone in a Spider-Man suit started chasing me, I would laugh. Because as much as I would want a Spider-Man to be in this universe, um, there's no chance. So, um, yeah, I'd laugh too. But, I wouldn't actually ever do anything bad. But, don't steal, by the way, don't steal. Or do anything illegal. Um, yeah, also... If you don't want to be laughed at, don't chase people in a Spider-Man suit. Alleyway. I did the same. He reached a dead end, and I was the only obstacle between him and his way to freedom. 
Hand over the bag and no one will get- Right, so this is actually really dangerous. If you're going to do this, please be careful. But I really don't recommend doing this. Like, very dangerous. It hurt, I told him while reaching out my hand. Who do you think you are, Spider-Man? Listen, kid, I'm not in the mood for games. You better get out of my way or I'll cut a hole in your face, the criminal said as he took out a knife. But I wasn't afraid. Okay, see at that point you should be afraid and you should be running the other direction because honestly, it's like a 60, no, 70, 30 odds of you winning because you have going other than your fists, your martial art training, you don't actually have anything. To, um, like, protect yourself, and he has a knife. And a bag he could just, just whack you with. I was trained to deal with this type of situation. I took a few steps toward him, and he started swinging the blade around. I managed to catch it with my hands, and then I landed a... Okay, now I bet you you're bleeding now, aren't you? Unless you got some sort of, like, nanotech suit. Which Blow with... Don't. So it looks like the original Spider-Man suit. With my knee right in the stomach. The robber fell to his knees, and it looked like he had a hard time breathing. Now, will you ever do that again? I asked him, while the man had both hands on the ground. He nodded as if to say no, and I left him there. I rushed back to the lady who was still in the middle of the street. Excuse me, ma'am, I believe this is yours, I said while handing her the purse. A bright smile appeared on her face. She gave me Okay, now you got pretty lucky doing that. Like, the odds, even if I went, like, even if me and one of my friends went to go do that, probably both of us would end up on the ground. And probably stabbed, so. I don't know, if they have a weapon, I don't recommend going to go chase them. And, yeah, it, you could get hurt quite badly. Gave me a big hug. We need heroes like you, Spider-Man, she said. Her words changed me that very day. I was not the same as I've been all my life. I was now a hero. I was the one who would protect the people of my city and punch every wrongdoer in the face. The next day I woke up and I was filled with hope and purpose. I checked my phone, went on social media, and to my surprise, I was going viral. It seemed that a kid filmed the entire thing from across the street. A video of- Wouldn't you have noticed him if you were in like a thin alleyway? Yes, doesn't matter. So, so far it's a really good animation. Um, broccoli, so I'm gonna call you broccoli from now on. Um, yeah, really good animation so far. Video of me beating up that guy and returning the purse had millions of views and thousands of comments. And everyone was thanking me and saying that finally, someone who could handle these cases that the police won't touch is here to save the day. I got out of bed, looked in the mirror, and said, The day's finally here, Josh. You're Spider-Man from now on. The next couple of days, no crime took place. And in my head, it seemed that the robbers and the criminals were afraid to be caught by me. But on October 24th, peace ended. From the early hours of the morning, thunderstorms inexplicably appeared in the sky. There were no traces of clouds, so the phenomena was truly strange. Even the news reported on it. At around 9 a.m., I was having breakfast, and at the same time... Sorry, I have bronchitis at the moment, so... Just gotta cough real quick. Just... Ugh. <clears throat> time listening to the TV. A man has been seen up in the sky with lightning bolts all around him. The news. Is this a lake show? From like, was it? I think it was from the Andrew Garfield universe. Is this a lake show? Well, let's see. Anchor reported. I turned around to see what he was talking about. A man in the sky? And there he was, filmed by their cameras. He was levitating with his arms spread wide, and in one hand he was holding a staff of some sort. Then on live footage, 
He pointed the staff downwards and hit people with several beams of light. The people that were hit. This is no elixir. This is some wizard. It's like um, Doctor Strange mixed with elixir, but like elixir's evilness ended up in Doctor Strange's thing. So he's just like a wizard. I'm saying that from what Tom Holland said. No spoilers. Um. Yeah, basically, like some wizard with a staff, electric staff by the looks of it. So, literally, electro mixed with um, Doctor Strange, shit's evil. Anyways, Pit fell to the ground. They started twitching until something else happened. Something came out of their bodies. It looked like their soul. A white ball of energy started floating away, getting further and further from each body it came out of. Then the orbs headed towards the man's staff. Police appeared at the scene. They started firing bullets at him, but they ricocheted. I'm needed, I said while putting on my mask and heading toward the town square. On my way there, I saw a lot of people running in the opposite direction, scared for their lives. I had to save them. As I arrived, I saw that with one wave of his hand, the villain made all the police officers fly away. They went in different directions, hitting trees, houses, and cars. I approached him. I'm not going to let you do anything to my city. He seemed intrigued. While he slowly came down to the ground, he started laughing. <laughs> Bravery. Such a useless trait, he said. Now face to face, I could see him better. He was dressed in all black. His eyes didn't have any pupils. They were blinding white. Who are you, and why are you doing this? I am here to gain eternal life by purging every soul here. Upon hearing that, I charged at him and jumped over the villain's head. As I was about to kick him, he moved just enough to avoid my attack. Then with a short but powerful swing of his staff, he hit me so hard that he threw me against a nearby car. I got up immediately. You won't get away with this. Too scared to subscribe? <laughs> What'd that say? Clara card 10. Normal is an illusion. What is normal for the spider is chaos for the fly. Styles adding. I guess that's true. Um, alright. I honestly don't know who Charles Adams is. Probably should so donate me in the comments for that. Anyways. It's like six Too minutes. scared to subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> you are admirable. It would be wise to take your soul, he said while pointing the staff towards me. I jumped while a beam of light burst into my direction. What are you talking about? Why do you want to take people's souls? He slowly lowered his arm. My name is Akina. I am over 4,000 years old. I managed to survive so long thanks to an ancient practice of taking someone's soul for personal gain. Unfortunately, the effects don't last forever. But from my calculations, if I take the soul of every person on Earth, it will sustain me for another 20,000 years. I will not stop until I become immortal. You're a crazy man, I said while running towards him, hoping to get his staff. I figured that it's the only way to stop him. As I approached the villain, a bright shockwave knocked me on my back. I fell right next to a man who was without a soul. But he started to move. He moved his arm, then his leg, okay. then jumped on all fours, just like an animal. The look in his eyes had nothing human about it. The man attacked me, and I tried to immobilize him. Ha <laughs> ha! I can see you stumbled upon the effects of my practice, the shaman said while looking at me, fighting for my life. What are you talking about? I uttered, managing to grab a hold of the man's head as he was trying to sink his teeth into me. The human soul is comprised of two parts, good and evil. I only need the one that is good. The evil part remains in the body, making each and every one of my victims feral, just like a beast. He told me, while being amused as I finally knocked the guy out. I tried to attack him again, 
this time from a different angle to catch him off guard. I jumped on his back and got a hand on his staff. He started to yell, and a terrible noise came out of his mouth. It pierced my ears, and my head started to hurt. With the last ounce of strength I had, I managed to kick the staff exactly in the right spot so that it broke. Akina spread his arms, and again, a white force field pushed me away from him. But at the same time, since... Okay, now this is what will happen when you do stuff like this, but I wouldn't recommend even going near them. You should just run in the opposite direction, like the other people, unless you have a nanotech suit, which I assume you don't. Okay, you need to leave, like, run away. You're lucky that you even managed to kick the staff away. I mean, I wouldn't have even thought of that if I was a guard, just try to get out, I guess, just kill him and run, or knock him out and run. Like, literally, there's no reason to, like, just run the other way. It's literally 12 or 5 in the morning. Well, 12 or 5 at night. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. You could like tell from the clock back there. Or I could just It's very late and I'm very tired and it's hard to process everything that this man is doing. Time since his staff was broken, all of the souls he captured from my city were being released. I could see hundreds of bright orbs leaving the broken staff. They landed on the ground, and as soon as they did, they materialized. They turned into the people they came from, but they looked like ghosts, and you could see right through them. The shaman flew away at that time. I was there, left in the middle of the town square, surrounded by a mix of good-hearted ghosts and feral people who acted like animals. It all seemed surreal. I had no idea how to fix things. I was way over my head, and my entire town would soon turn into ruins. Since there were so many people that lost their humanity, they started hurting and even killing the ones that were left. They had no chance. In about a week, the place turned from a beautiful, joyful city to a ruin. Cars were flipped over, burned and utterly unusable. Houses were broken into, windows were smashed, and all you could see were the beasts running around on the streets, acting like animals more and more as time went on. Time went on, and nothing seemed to change. I was the only one left in the city, and maybe the world. I had no idea. The shaman must have gone to other cities and other countries, sucking the soul out of people, gaining immortality, and leaving the entire planet in ruins. About two months passed. And apart from the ones that got their souls split, I didn't see anyone else on the streets. I had some cans of food that kept me full, and some water. The power went out. Everything looked almost deserted. But something kept me company. The ghosts that were all around me. Ghosts that I befriended. Ghosts that were nice and talked to me. And by ghosts, I mean those souls that materialized after I cracked his staff. So, what are you going to do, Josh? One day, Mike asked me. He was a former CIA agent, one of the coolest people I ever met. Well, one of the coolest ghosts. I have no idea. I'm completely lost. I told him while looking at a pile of red clothes next to me on the roof. That pile was my costume. I took it off because I didn't think I deserved to wear it. Why did you become a hero? To protect people. And why are you giving up now? You became a hero because you liked Spider-Man movies. So, don't lie to a CIA agent, I bet you he can tell. I don't know what to do, it's too much for me. Well, I think I know someone that can help you, he said. <laughs> My eyes widened. I really needed help at that moment. Immediately, another ghost appeared. She looked similar in age to Mike. Her name was Syra, and she had some information about soul splitting and stuff like that. I didn't know they were involved in such spiritual stuff. Syra told me of a method to willingly split your soul. By doing so, you release the good part of it and retain the bad one, being much more powerful. 
but I will have somewhat control over my body for a brief period of time. He said that I will have enough time to defeat the shaman and return all the souls to their respective bodies. But because he didn't take mine, chances are that I will eventually become like the people running around the city. And that was a sacrifice I was willing to make. Immediately, I performed the ritual and felt a sharp pain in my chest. I fell on my back. In no time, a small orb left my body, and I started feeling stronger. I got up and jumped down. Alright, this is exactly like what happened in Toby Maguire when the Venom symbiote came over there. Um, like, basically, we felt more powerful. It was basically taking over him. Um, literally. Good job, Brooklyn. Um, I see, like, your little Easter eggs of stuff that happened in the actual Spider Man movies. Spider Man movies. Down onto the street from on top of the four story building. Two wild people attacked me, but I evaded them and went in search of the shaman. A few days of frantic search, and I managed to find him. There you are, I said while locating him in the middle of the woods, meditating. He got up and waved his staff that he repaired. A gust of wind blew in my direction, but I didn't budge. What is this? He said. He couldn't believe that I didn't get knocked down. I immediately lunged at him. I was so quick that he didn't even realize I was moving. I got right in his face. I grabbed the staff, threw it on the ground. Then I punched him so hard that he went through two trees before stopping. I couldn't believe how strong I was. But at the same time, I felt like I was getting more and more violent. I have to fix this first, I said while going toward the staff. I picked it up, said an incantation that Syra taught me, performed the ritual, and a powerful beam of blue light came out of it and lit the sky. In no time, all of the souls that were trapped came out and went straight to their bodies. The shaman disintegrated right in front of my eyes. But I was feeling chest pains again. I put one knee to the ground. I couldn't stand up. The next thing I know, everything went dark. I woke up at the hospital. Are you okay? A nurse asked me. I was heavily medicated, but... I was still alive, and I was normal. Y yes, I said. She walked away, and in came a woman that looked familiar. You saved us, Josh, she said. Syra? Yes. But how did I go back to normal? I didn't know that part of the ritual, but it seems that if you sacrifice yourself right before you lose your humanity, your good part of the soul comes back, she told me. Here, I have something for you. You're not done yet. She handed me the Spider-Man costume. I put it under my pillow and couldn't wait to wear it next time so I can save the world. Okay, like, wow, great story today. Broccoli animations. But that will be it for today, guys. So don't forget to like, subscribe with post notifications on. And if you've made it this far in the video, comment broccoli. Comment broccoli. And um, uh, go check out my socials. My TikTok is AX Discord, capital Y, capital T, which is called YT, capital YT. Um, and it's the same with my Twitter, same with my Instagram. Yeah, so that's it for this week guys so i'll see you next time bye guys